Hi everybody and welcome to Kids Club Liberty Lights. Today is silly hat day in Kids Club. So if you've got your silly hat, we're gonna put them on after our pledges. If you don't, pause the video right now, run upstairs or run wherever and grab the silliest hat you can find. And after our pledges, we'll put them on, okay? So let's get started with our pledges. First pledge is to the American flag. Ready? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Great job to the Christian flag. Ready? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. To the Bible, the Word of God. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Great job. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for today. Thank you for Kids Club. Thank you for every boy and girl that gets to watch. I pray that you'll help us all to learn something about you, to learn how we can be better Christians and make you smile. We love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get your silly hat. I'm going to get my dinosaur hat. Ready? Let's sing our song. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. Ye are the light of the world. Now I got my dinosaur hat. So T-Rex has short arms, so you got to clap like a T-Rex. Ready? Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. Ye are the light of the world. Great job. Liberty lights, shine bright. Liberty lights, shine bright. Shout it out. Liberty lights, shine bright. Great job. And I hope that you all have been shining bright this week for Jesus. Now I've got some silly songs to go with our silly hats that we're wearing this week. And our first one, I got a different hat I'm gonna wear. It's my cowboy hat. Great job. And this one's gonna go with our wrapped up, tied up, tangled up. Now cowboys use their lassos and they wrap the cows up, wrap the horses up. They have all those lassos that they use. So we're gonna sing this song. We're not wrapped up like a cowboy does, but we're wrapped up in Jesus. Jesus is love. God's love just wraps us up. It has a lot of fun hand motions. So we'll go slow and then we'll speed it up faster and faster. Careful not to get yourself in the chin, okay? Goes like this. I'm all wrapped up. Put your arms like this, like you're giving yourself a hug. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. And then I'm all tangled up in Jesus. And don't break your arm, okay? I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in God, all right? We'll go slow the first time we sing it to make sure you got it, okay? I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up. I'm all tied up. I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Amen. Got that? All right, let's try it again. Ready? I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Amen. Forgot to move the slide, but you get the point. All right, let's do it one more time. Super duper fast. Okay, ready? I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Amen. Did you get it? How many of you knocked yourself in the chin? All right. Well, we're going to sing another silly song. Lots of fun. Hand motions. But this time, with the bubbles, it's my pirate hat. Ready? Got my pirate hat on. Arr! Now, ready for a joke? One of Miss Kara's favorite. What's a pirate's favorite church song? Can you guess? Are ye washed in the blood? Har, har, har. That's <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, so let's sing this one. It's 
bubbling. Now, every time you say the word bubbling, you got to bubble, 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 bubble. All right? So bubble this one, you really can get yourself, so be careful. It's bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. They're singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. Some people don't understand it, but I can't keep it quiet. And you shout as loud as you can, okay? And then back to bubble, 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 bubble. Some more. Got it? All right, let's try it. Ready? It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. They're singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. Some people whew, don't understand it. Let's start again. I made a mistake. Ready? It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. They're singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. Some people don't understand it, but I can't keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling in my soul. Okay, got it? All right, let's sing it again. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. They're singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. Some people don't understand it, but I can't keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling in my soul. Now, with our pirate hat, we're going to sing it pirate voice. <laughs> or the best pirate voice you can do. All right, ready? Still do the motions. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. They're singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. Some people don't understand it, but I can't keep it quiet. <coughs> it's bubbling, 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 bubbling in my soul. Great job. All right. I know most of you are sitting home laughing at Miss Kara, but I want to laugh at you guys too. So take a picture of you in your silly hat and send the picture to me, all right, to my cell phone. All your mommies have it, so send it to me so I can laugh at you like I know you were just laughing at me. All right, now, for we're going to get into our story about George Mueller. And for the rest of the time, got a little calmer hat to wear, no pirates, nothing too crazy. So keep your hat on and we'll have it. Stay silly. Uh, but this is not a silly story. This is an incredible story, and I hope you've been enjoying it and have been enjoying it as much as I have. Because it is awesome to see God working in George Mueller's life. What's even more awesome is to know that he can work that way in my life, too. God wants to do miracles. Because then we can give him the praise and glory and say, God, what a great God you are. You always take care of your children. You always take care of your people. And so we have learned about George George hadn't lived a very good life. He wasn't a very good young man, but the Lord was gracious and saved George. That was the first miracle he did is that he gave him the gift of salvation. Jesus died on the cross to save all of us, to provide payment for our sin. He died on the cross for you and for me, for everyone, to pay the price that our sin demanded. And he longs for us to have a relationship with him. And George accepted that gift of salvation. Then George became a preacher and he preached in Ebenezer Chapel. Well, then God led him to Bristol, a big city that had a lot of poor people in it, a lot of slums and ghettos. While he was there preaching, God laid on George's heart the need to start an orphanage, a home for boys and girls that had no mommy or daddy, no one to provide for them. See, back at that time in England, they the orphans had to live in poor houses or slum homes with, sometimes they even lived in asylums or places with, with criminals and with people that were mentally unstable. And it was a very dangerous place for these boys and girls. Some of them even stayed on the street. And George's heart was burdened. He knew that God wanted him to do something about it. But how could he? He had no money. But God provided in miraculous ways. One day, one night, this lady knocked on the door and had an envelope of money to help them. Another time, someone they didn't even know and had never even met sent them boxes and boxes full of kitchen stuff the exact day they prayed about it. Isn't that amazing how God works? And soon, George had all the money and all the provisions to start this orphanage. He started the orphanage. He had the people to work there. He had everything, but unfortunately, the first day they opened it up, 
and no one came. There were no orphans. George got a little discouraged and that's where our story ended last week. So we're gonna find out what happened. Well, George went home and he told Mary the story. He was so discouraged. Nobody? Mary looked up at George as if she was going to cry. George had just told her all about how no one showed up, no orphans, nothing at the orphanage. No, Mary, not a child, not a mom, not a grandpa, nobody came. Well, where were they? I don't know. I don't understand, Mary. I thought this was what God wanted me to do. Well, I believe so, George. God always provided, George continued. I prayed for money. He sent money. I prayed for housekeepers. He sent housekeepers, kitchen supplies. God sent, what do I, that's it, George. You prayed for everything and God provided. But guess what we forgot to pray for? Children. We haven't been praying for the orphans. We haven't been praying for the boys and girls God would send to us. That's what we need to do. And so together in their parlor, George and Mary bowed their heads and asked God for orphans. The next morning, George woke up full of confidence. He knew that God would come through. He rushed through his breakfast and opened the door to the orphanage. When he opened the door, he noticed over his shoulder, there were two people standing on the street behind him. There was a woman and a little boy. The woman followed George into the house. May I help you? George asked her. She tugged the boy behind her. George directed her to a table in the parlor. She explained that this boy was Jerry. It was her sister's son, her nephew. She had died leaving him an orphan. They couldn't find his father and she was unable to take care of him. As she was explaining the story, George looked around. Where did Jerry go? The woman continued when suddenly, ah! George jumped up in pain. Jerry had been exploring the house and had found a big rock and had sneaked in and threw it right on George's foot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, don't mind him, the woman said. He's a good boy deep inside. I'm sure if you search hard enough, you'll find some good in him. And she left. Well, George's morning soon got busier, chasing after Jerry. That night, George said, Lord, I'm going to need you to help me. Help me to have the wisdom to deal with these children and have the grace, kindness, and compassion you would have and send more children. Sure enough, the next morning, the parlor was full with twice as many children as adults came through the door one after the other. They explained their situations. They asked questions. George was starting to restore order when all of a sudden he heard a crash. Jerry, again, had found another rock. This time he picked it up and threw it through the window. Ah, oh, my window, George exclaimed. Ah, Mr. Mueller, don't you worry. You asked for kids, didn't you? Now you got them and all that comes with them. You can't complain, you're getting what you asked for. Oh, George smiled inside. He sure was getting what he asked for, but it was the Lord that had provided so he would never complain. Soon they had 42 children. They were packed out. They had cooks, housekeepers to help care for the children, but more and more requests for orphans to come came through. Soon George had to rent a second house right next door on Wilson Street. Then the following year, he had to rent a third house. They were packed out. Now during this time, George kept his word and never asked anyone publicly for money, but God would still provide. It was incredible. One day they needed five pounds. Now remember pounds is how they counted money over in England. It's like our dollars, but they needed five pounds right away to pay a bill. George said, Oh Lord, I don't have any, but he wrote in his prayer diary, his prayer journal. And I'm going to come back and talk about that at the end. George wrote, 
God, I am trusting you to supply five pounds. Later that day, a very fancy woman came to the door. She was dressed so nicely and had beautiful jewelry on. She came to the door and knocked and walked into Mr. Mueller's office. Sir, I am very convicted about all my fancy jewelry that I have. I feel that I don't need it and I'd like to give it to you so you could use the money at your orphanage. It's not worth much, but altogether, guess how much it costs? Five pounds. George couldn't believe it. Not much, not much, he said to the woman. This is exactly what I need from the Lord. And that's how God continued through the months, through the years to supply the need of George Mueller. One time, he gathered his employees together, the cooks, the housekeepers, all of the staff of the orphanage. He had never before discussed any of the money or finances with them. He felt that he would carry that burden on his own. But then he thought that he was robbing his people of the blessing because how excited he was when God provided. And he wanted to share the miracles with his staff. Now they were coming on a very tight time of year. And so George gathered them all together and explained what was going on and how he had conducted the affairs of the orphanage. As he explained that he would just pray to God and God would provide. And now he was asking his people to pray as well. One of the women stood up and raised her hand. Sir, it might help if we cut down some expenses. Well, we have, George responded. We can't cut much more. Well, not quite, Mr. Mueller. You could cut my salary. That's her paycheck. I can't cut your salary. Oh, yes, Mr. Mueller. You see, I receive a widow's pension, some money since my husband died. That's more than enough to meet my needs. I don't want you to pay me any more. Another staff member stood up reached in his pocket and handed several pounds to George. I'm gonna go pray some more, but see, I've been holding on to this money, asking God how I could best use it for him. And now God just showed me, please take it. Then the cook spoke up. Here's six pounds from me. I've been saving it in the bank, but I'm gonna send for it immediately. And you know what, keep it. I'm gonna go take care of the soup. George couldn't believe how God provided through his people. And now not only was he praying for miracles, he had a whole team behind him praying as well. Through the next few weeks, George noticed a strange uneasiness in the orphanages. One time he tried to ask two of his staff to help him move some things, but they had their arms full of bundles of packages and rushed by him like they didn't even hear him. That was weird. That night, he caught the housekeeper hustling out the back door, carrying something large too. This was weird. That night, uh, later that night, after supper at the orphanage, one of the staff members stood up and said he'd like to make a speech. He said a few sentences, a few words, and then he gave a large envelope to George. George opened it and looked inside. There were so many bills inside. Where did this come from? You don't have any money, he said to the man. It's an answer to our prayers. So the orphanage can stay open and help more children. I understand that, but where'd you get the money? All of us. What do you mean all of you? Well, we had different things in our rooms that we didn't need. Silverware, pictures, little furniture, and we sold them. We, want, we didn't want you to have all the fun getting your prayers answered. We figured God could answer our prayers, and he showed us how. George couldn't believe it. God had blessed through his people. Here's another amazing story of how God blessed through an unexpected way. There was a widow one day that had come to have lunch with George and Mary, his wife. She had come to talk to George about needing some help spiritually. While she was talking, George noticed her shawl and her bonnet. It was a little worn. 
this lady was a widow who had no husband to care for her and she was older so she couldn't quite get a job to care for herself either. George thought he had been so focused on other needs that he hadn't really cared for this woman in his church. He spoke up, Mrs. Brightman, I would consider it an honor to share with you anything that I have. Any need that you have, I will help you. In fact, I'd like to put your name on the bank account with my, Mary and myself. That way, what we have is yours and all of your needs could be met. That way we can help you. After he spoke, Mrs. Brightman caught her breath. <gasps> she quickly grabbed her purse. Oh, you dear, dear people, you dear people, you won't be sorry. George had no idea what she was talking about. I have 500 pounds in my purse right now. What? George just looked at her. She quickly explained how she had inherited some money. and She didn't know what to do with it. Your words gave me an idea. I want to give it to you and the orphans. I want to share this with you. He wants the orphanage to have this legacy, $500. Oh, George cleared his throat. I am thankful. A little overwhelmed, but I can't accept it. Mary set her teacup down with a clatter. What? No, not yet, George said. I want you to be sure it's God's will. I want you to pray and I will pray that this is what the Lord wants you to do. And if it's his will, that he'll give you peace and give me peace about this. George and Mary began to pray. $500 would help them so much. Sure enough, the widow came back to him and had given them a check in a letter. And the letter said, I have asked God in my heart if I am doing this for him and I have complete peace, not the slightest doubt that this is what God wants me to do. I want the orphanage to have the money. And in the letter was 500 pounds. George was smiling. And at the, the next day at the Wilson Street House, his heart was full of joy. He was so excited about how the Lord had provided this incredible amount of money to help. The house mother stood before George. Sir, I'd like to let you know that the house next door, the Graham family, they're going to move out. We're getting a little tight in here. Maybe you'd like another house for the orphans. But I told him it's a pity you have no money. So we'll have to see. I don't know. As she was talking, George couldn't keep the smile from his face. He had 500 pounds. Was this God's plan? As George was pondering it in his mind, all of a sudden they heard a splintering crash. Oh, now you've done it. He heard the housekeeper run out. You broke it right in two. Now you've done it. And she brought in this boy in front of George. Broke it right in half. What? What? George looked at Colin, the 10-year-old orphan. Colin, what did you do this time? What did you break in half? The banisters. I slid down the stair banister. You, a little old thin fellow like you, broke my banister? Colin stuck out his lip. Wasn't just me. There's about six of us boys. We made a chain and, well, the banister couldn't hold us all. George hid the smile. As, as he spoke, George realized there were hundreds of other little boys just like this Colin fun-loving, troublemaking orphans. George had his answer right there. These boys and girls needed food, shelter, a place to play. They also needed to hear of God's love. God provided the answer of whether or not he should buy that house through Colin. God also provided the money through the widow. And that summer on Wilson Street, now they had four houses for the orphans. On the first day, the doors opened. Colin and his friends were the first ones to run through the doors to the new house. Colin got to the staircase. 
Oh, look at these banisters. They're perfect. Great job, Mr. Mueller. And he and his friends ran up and slid down. At the door, George shooed in the rest of the children. Two little red-headed girls carrying dolls. A little boy with freckles all over his face. Another boy blowing a toy trumpet the whole way. A little girl with a cold. George's mouth smiled so large as he thought of the joy of having these children here. God had provided. This was incredible. Things went so smoothly that for the next two years, God sent all of the money in and more. Now they had 150 orphans. And not only was God providing food and shelter, he provided clothing, the people to take care of them. God was blessing in amazing ways. And these children were getting to hear about God's love for them. Well, a couple of houses down on Wilson Street. One October day, very cold, wind blew in the house. A man slammed his kitchen door and exclaimed out loud to his daughter, Those brats did it again, Bessie. Another window, Pa? Not just a window this time, my skylight. That's the third thing those orphans busted in three months. The daughter continued peeling potatoes. You ought to get the law in order after them brats, the daughter said. They've ruined our street. Wilson Street's so loud, it makes so much racket. Can't even take a nap in the afternoon. What are you going to do, Pa? I'm writing a letter. To law and order, she asked. Nope, to Mueller himself. That won't do any good, she said. Letters don't bother that stubborn creature. This one will, the man said. I'm getting him to close up every one of those houses. I've got a way that he will. Now go get me my pen, Bessie, and I'll take care of business. And that's where we're going to end our story. This week, what happens? Do you think this man's going to get the houses closed down, the orphanages to close down? Looks like George is in for some trouble. And so we'll see what happens next week. Now, we have been learning and reading every week this verse. So, uh, Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And isn't it amazing how God provided for George? He keeps doing it. Now, George mentioned that he had a prayer journal. And that's how we know all of these stories about the life of George Mueller. He was a real man, just like Brother Burton, just like your dad. He was a real man that lived and he had real needs and his real God answered. But how we learn these stories is because George would write them all down in a prayer journal. And I want to encourage you to start your own prayer journal. I've got a couple things right here. In fact, someone just gave me this and it's called my prayer journal. And inside you can record different things that you're praying. I just, I haven't even gotten to use it yet. And different things you're praying for. And just like George Mueller did, you write what you're praying for. Remember the time he prayed for five pounds and then God gave it to him. When you write what you're praying for, beside it, write today's date. And then when God answers that prayer, you write it down when he answered that prayer. And what that will do will help you, like George, to see the miracles that God does in your life. It could be small things or it could be huge things. I'm sure once George gets this letter from this man, what do you think he's going to do? I think he's going to pray. And he's going to probably write it in his book. And then when God answers the prayer in amazing ways, and we'll see how he does, he wrote it down too. And he wrote the date. So this is a fancy schmancy prayer journal. But you know what you also could do? You also could just get a notebook, maybe even your all-in notebook that Pastor gave us this week. And you write it down. Write down your prayer requests. 
the things that you're praying for. Some of you have people in your family that aren't safe. You pray for that. Some of you have, I know, a certain someone that's praying for a horse. And some of you have smaller things, bigger things. Write it down and write the date when you pray about it. And when God answers that prayer, write that down too. And this will be like George Mueller, a testimony of the miracles of God, a testimony of how God can provide. So I want everybody to get your prayer journal and work on it this week. It could just be a piece of paper, but just something to show God, I'm trusting you for this and I can't wait to see how you provide. So let's all work this week at having at praying more and then having more faith in God. Me as well as you. All right. Have a great week. I'll see you next Thursday. Liberty lights shine bright. Love you guys.